Hey everybody, how's it going? It's Audra Baker here and I am the founder of AudraBaker.com and the 7 Week Freedom Challenge coming right up. Okay, in this training video I am very excited because we are talking about the 7 secrets to increase metabolism, lose weight, and shape shift your body that have nothing to do with food or torturous exercise and today what we're going to be talking about is moving your body and the connection with moving your body. So. In fact, I don't just call it moving your body. I call it move that beautiful body. This is inspired movement. I hope you guys are ready to rock and roll. Um, <clears throat> the fact that I have been in the fitness industry for two decades and almost now, and uh, this is very near and dear to my heart, and I've run the gamut uh, with, with fitness programs and exercise, and I've come full circle, and I'm really excited to share this with you guys today. So what you're going to be learning in this training video is we're going to talk about the, the solid, like rock solid evidence of why we should be moving our body. Okay. There are a lot of benefits. I also feel very compelled to dispel toxic nutritional beliefs that you may have about exercise and weight loss. I think this is a very important topic and uh, why I believe you should never, ever connect exercise to calories that you eat, or you should never connect exercise to weight loss. We're going to get into that. And uh, behind the scenes, I'm sorry, the science behind changing your body's biochemistry so that it actually wants to be thin. And one other bullet point I forgot to put up here is um, I'm going to share a little bit of my story and some um, crazy pictures of me doing some of the cool things I love to do. So let's get started. This is going to be a big, deep training lesson. I hope you guys are prepared. This is big, juicy stuff in here today. This is, might feel a little longer than our other training videos, but I think that you're going to really uh, benefit and I think you're going to love it too. So move that beautiful body. If you are a human being residing here on planet Earth, your body was meant to move. You were designed to move. I don't care if you think that you're a bookworm or you're unathletic, um, which I have a lot of clients like that that have never really moved a day in their life, but you can look all the way back to our ancestors, even our Paleolithic ancestors, and up until very recently, up until um, the um, industrial age, we moved our bodies all the time. In fact, the more we sit on our butts all day long, the more damage we cause, and the evidence is um, very clear, and I'm going to share that evidence with you right now. Look at this. Look at all the things um, that come. Notice it doesn't say when you kill yourself with torturous exercise, but it's when you move your beautiful body. You have a decreased risk of cardiovascular disease, decreased blood pressure, de decreased risk of many, many forms of cancer. This can help to prevent or manage strokes, type 2 diabetes, arthritis. It helps prevent bone loss. All of this is about moving your beautiful body. Remember, I don't care how you do it. This is just about moving. Movement can decrease or reverse depression. I'm telling you, I think from the bottom of my heart, I believe I stumbled into teaching fitness uh, because back in the day when you taught group fitness, you did every class with, it wasn't like you were a coach standing there barking out commands, but you, you know, you would exercise with the people, with your students. And, um, and I just, I, I think I was self-medicating, um, possible depression. You increase muscle strength and endurance. It delivers oxygen to other, and uh, other nutrients to different bodily tissues increase efficiency of cardiovascular system. That means your heart and your lungs work well. Your sleep quality goes up and it can have a very positive effect on your sex life. It includes improved hormonal balance, feeling better about your body, enhanced arousal in women, decreased likelihood of erectile dysfunction in men, increased chance of living a longer and healthier life um, in terms of a curb. So if you look at people who don't move their body ever, um, their, their typical, um, you can look at like their lifespan as a bell shaped curve. And at the bottom of that bell shaped curve, um, their, their body capabilities, they're just getting in and out of a chair and able to function bodily. It just goes down dramatically. Whereas if you have fitness in your life and you're exercising, you're moving your body throughout your entire life into your sixties and seventies and eighties and nineties and hundreds, 
what happens is you have better body function, you're able to have more freedom of life as you get older, and then your lifespan no longer really looks like a bell curve all of a sudden, and this has been proven, you can look at all sorts of research, you know, that person, you know, went, you know, they're in their 90s or, you know, late 90s, and then they went to the pool that day to go swimming, and then, you know, they lived their wonderful life, and then the next thing you know, maybe they went to sleep that night and didn't wake up. It's a very different experience than what older people are experiencing right now with the bell-shaped curve. They, they lose um, functioning in their body way too soon and um, have a really rough time later on in life. So, look, notice none of those uh, bullet points up there said, lose weight and get the hottest body ever. That's because I really wanted to point out the bullet points of real hard science that is out there that will increase your quality of life. This is why it's such a great idea to move that beautiful body of yours. Now, here's a huge misconception and major dilemma. We equate exercise to losing weight. If I exercise, I lose weight. Okay, we also equate it with eating. So, you know, if I um, if I exercise today, then I'm going to, you know, eat whatever I want. I'm going to eat a ton of it. Or, um, you know what, I did not exercise today, so I'm just going to not eat very much. I'm just going to be really controlling of my food. And I believe this is like the worst thing you could do. Both of these, they're toxic nutritional beliefs, um, and they don't work. Um, if you've connected moving your body to eating, it is toxic. It is not the right thing. And I'm going to explain um very clear how and why. So check this out. Here, here's some hard science. So you can never out-exercise food, ever. I think that when you connect, and I get how it might be easy to connect. I get how you can go, well, food equals calories, and if I eat those, calories go into my body. And exercise equals calorie expenditure, right? One is a calorie input, and one is a calorie expenditure. I see why you connect it that way. Um, popular science has has forced that upon you. The fitness world and the the weight loss world has forced that idea upon you. But I'm telling you, you can never, and I mean ever, exercise over exercise. Um, I'm sorry, you cannot out exercise the food that you're eating. And so here's the example that I put up here. Okay, if you can think of a huge heroic thing that you can do for exercise, running a marathon would probably be that. Okay, so let's look at the amount of calories somebody who would be running a marathon would burn. I have three different examples up here for you. You can see um, a 130-pound person, 165, or 210-pound, okay? So let's just take a 165-pound person. If that person decided to run a marathon, plus or minus, they'd burn a little under 3,000 calories, okay? It would be 2,800 calories, plus or minus metabolism affecting biochemistry. But this is a good estimate, okay? Now... Let's look on the other side at what a typical food court trip would look like. And I'm using the food court as an example, but you can use anything as an example. But if you're going to go get a nice peppermint hot chocolate, you're looking at like 500 calories. You get one of those pretzels, you're looking at another 500 calories. You're looking at a stop at the, what is that place called? Panda Express. It seems to be in every single food court. Easily 2,000 calories. And this is one shopping mall trip to the food court, not to mention all the nasty shit you're putting in your body, like from additives to preservatives to food coloring. I'm not even going to get into that, but because we're just talking calories here. Easily you've consumed over 3,000 calories in a very, very short amount of time, and yet that's still not even <laughs> the same amount of calories as somebody who's like maybe 165 pounds could burn running a marathon. Are you getting my point here? You making the choice to connect the amount of food you eat and connect moving your body and exercising is a very bad idea, okay? Now, I'm sitting here giving you logistics, I'm sitting here giving you numbers, but the truth is the problem lies when you decide, oh my God, I have to exercise because this is the only way, the only way that the weight's ever going to come off. And I see this all the time. And I see women especially do whatever they possibly can to make it happen. And that is a huge problem in my book because we as women think, oh my God, I need to push, I need to shove. I hate this body fat on my body so much. I need to get it off and I'm going to do whatever it takes and then I'm going to decide to run a marathon or something. And that is definitely not the right answer because one thing, now, now look, if you happen to love running and you think it's the coolest thing you've ever done in your whole life and it just makes you just thrilled and happy, then you know what? By all means, 
go for a run, do your thing. But I have found in my over two decades of experience working with women who've got 20, 30, 50, 70 pounds to lose, oftentimes they get so fed up with the weight, they get so fed up with how they feel and this extra body fat on their body that they just decide to go run a marathon. And they don't even like running. They don't even like it. And now they're forcing themselves into doing something that they don't enjoy in the first place, jacks up their biochemistry, repetitive stress of running a marathon or something like that isn't necessarily right for a lot of people, yet that's what we do. And I'm telling you, it's not the right answer. The numbers are right in front of you. No wonder, you know, my client who was 40 pounds overweight, who decided to do a marathon, you know, didn't lose any weight. In fact, what's worse is she got a knee injury. You know, I see this all the time. So move your beautiful body in a way that you love. I think this is the most important point to make. It almost doesn't matter what you do. It matters that you do something that you love. If, again, I'll go back to the marathon. If you happen to be somebody who your body, like running a marathon works for you, your body feels good, you don't get injuries, um, you know, it's something that you have a thrill and you're joyed about it, by all means, run a marathon. But again, a lot of people find many different ways, many different avenues of moving their body a lot more joyable, okay, enjoyable. So let me give you some examples, you know, maybe you love to go hiking, maybe you love to go bike riding, maybe you love being outdoors in nature, maybe you love swimming, maybe, I mean, I don't know, maybe uh, you live, you know, in a beautiful place and you just want to go out on adventures. I mean, that's definitely how it is here in San Francisco. Um, there's always beautiful hills to oversee and different, you know, views to, to look at through the city. It's miraculous. What is it that you love to do? Maybe you always wanted to get into dancing. You know, if you loved going to step aerobics classes or fitness things, you know, doing the group exercise thing, then do it. If it makes you happy, makes you feel great. If Zumba rocks your face off, then I want you to do Zumba and I want you to do a lot of it. I want you to have fun. The point is, is that you need to move your body. You need to discover what you love to do. Even if you think you're a bookworm, even if you think you don't move your body, trust me, your body wants to move. It's dying to move. Okay. Do it. Okay. Do it as much as possible, whatever it is you think you would love to do. And I mean, I work with clients all the time to strategize because sometimes it's just about getting moving, something that makes them feel good. Oftentimes it's getting out in nature. What can they do out in nature on a real regular basis? Sometimes they have a dog and they love taking their dogs for walks, whatever it might be. It doesn't matter. Now that's how I want you to be moving your body on a real regular basis. Okay. This brings pleasure into your life. It brings joy into your life. It changes your biochemistry. It changes your hormone state. It gets you out of stress response. Okay. And it will start to change your body when you start to do things you love to do and become embodied, things can shift. Okay. And one thing I keep forgetting to talk about, which is weird is yoga. You know, you know, I personally, have, I can't say that I like love yoga the way that I love going dancing or the way I love going mountain biking, but yoga has changed me. It has shifted me and I crave it in a very different way. I crave it in a quiet, more contemplative way. Um, versus when I want to go salsa dancing, but both bring me immense pleasure. And so that's just another example. Okay. Now let's talk about exercise. Cause everybody's like, well, what about all these exercise gurus telling me to do this and that and blah, blah, blah. Okay. Let's talk about the typical exercise, which in my opinion, it can be, you know, part of this first bullet point called move your beautiful body, do it as much as possible, do something you love. I'm not saying exercise can't fall into this category, but the specific exercise I'm talking about is something that, um, high intensity interval training, it's something that needs to be brief. So I believe in the world of exercise, it should be playful. It should be fun. It should be metabolically challenging. And we're going to talk about that in just a second. And it should be very brief. So HIT stands for high intensity interval training. And that's what we're going to discuss. I'm going to discuss how this shifts and changes insulin, leptin, and uh, corticotropin releasing hormones. So let's talk about that. So really, if you are holding on to excess weight in your body, um, and, and let's say you decide to go to the gym and you hate what you're doing, a great example is a marathon. My girl, 40 pounds overweight, mid forties, can't stand her body, so pissed off at how much fat she has. Damn it, I'm gonna grin and bear it and run a marathon. And so now she's out running like a 15 minute mile and she's out for hours and hours and hours on end. She hates it, first of all, okay? And she can't figure out why she can't lose weight. Well, 
First off, insulin is a fat storing hormone, okay? And when your insulin levels are high because you're on a blood sugar roller coaster because um, you can't, uh, this has to do with nutritionally, lots of sugar, lots of stress in the diet, lack of sleep, insulin's high all the time. Basically, you aren't gonna lose weight to save your life because when your insulin levels are high, it's just, it, it triggers your body to store fat. It does not trigger it to release fat, okay? Now, leptin is kind of like this master hormone. It's basically, you can think of leptin as, it's, it's a hormone that's in charge of your blueprint, your, your fat or your thin blueprint, how fat you are or how thin you are. But what happens a lot of times when insulin is high and also what happens is you get leptin resistance. And what that means is that your brain doesn't get the signal from leptin, okay? So I'm sorry, from leptin. I said leptin like leptin tea. That's funny. So your brain doesn't get a signal. So it doesn't really notice that leptin, leptin, I keep saying leptin. This is cracking me up. It doesn't even recognize that there's leptin going on because you have leptin resistance. And so now it thinks that your body is starving. So it's going to, you know, keep the, the fat blueprint going. All right. Now, what is a way that we can change this biochemistry? How can we become more sensitive to leptin, right? So this way your brain understands what's going on. So less resistance to leptin and decreased insulin. Well, guess what? There's certain type of metabolic training that you can do that actually changes your biochemistry. So it, it decreases insulin response and decreases leptin resistance. So think about this. Back in the day, Paleolithic ancestors, let's say you're getting chased by a tiger, okay? The most important thing that you need in this stress response, it's a stress response going on in your body, is to get away as absolutely fast as you can, okay? I'm talking full-blown sprint away from the tiger, all right? So you got to be fast. And this is an imprint. This is a, this is a, a survival mechanism in our body, a stress response survival mechanism that tells your body, oh my God, if I'm going to survive, if I'm going to live, I need to be thin. I need to be small. Okay. So if I'm not fast, if I can't get away from this tiger, I'm going to die. Right. So it's a survival mechanism. Now the crazy thing that happens, let's say it's the 10 to 15 seconds that you're running for your life away from that lion, tiger, or bear. Oh my, corticotropin releasing hormone it's a part of the stress response. It gets released in the brain when you're running from the lion, tiger, or bear, oh my. Now, when it does that, when it gets released into the brain, or it doesn't have to be running away from a tiger, but you're doing something at a very intense speed. You're doing something with all of your effort, not for a long period of time, but for a short period of time, full on burst. When this gets released in your brain, you become more sensitive to leptin. When your brain becomes more sensitive to leptin, it goes, oh my God, where did all this fat come from? Oh my goodness. Well, I need to turn on my thin blueprint. We need to start getting rid of and expelling this fat. We need to start burning this fat rather than storing it. Do you get my point? Okay. So, and I used high intensity interval training as an example here. These are very short durations of exercise of things that you can do. And again, I highly believe it should be playful, fun, and brief. So a great example would be a Tabata set. We use Tabatas in BFIT, um, our outdoor fitness program, all the time. A Tabata set is 20 seconds of full-blown effort of something. Doesn't even matter what it is. You just want to do a full-blown effort for 20 seconds, and then you take a complete break for 10 seconds. You do that eight times in a row, and you've ended up exercising for four minutes. So sometimes out at BeFit, our workouts might be 12 minutes long, literally, because we only have three different exercises. And those three different exercises, for the whole thing, it's done in Tabata sets of four minutes. And now we're done in 12 minutes. It's like, okay, what do we do for the rest of the 40-minute class, right? So this is the type of thing that if you do, again, maybe one time a week, two times a week, three times a week, it's not even necessary to do it that much. It should be brief. If you add this into your move, your beautiful body plan, doing whatever else you want, it will change and shift your life, okay? Now, I wanted to talk to you just a little bit about my story, and it really does start with completely and totally sucking at sports. Um, I was on the basketball team in junior high school, but honestly, I was on the B team, 
and I sat on the bench the whole season on the B team. I absolutely sucked. I think I tried to run track one year in junior high, and I am not the kind of person that gets energized when a gun goes off and it's time for a race. I would get sweaty palms and I would want to vomit. Like every time there would be a track meet, I would, I would, want, I would get sick. I would do everything I could to get out of it. I never was an athlete from that standpoint ever until I moved out to California at the wee age of 18. And I started discovering a lot of fun things that I could do with my body. And I'm telling you, I loved them. Snowboarding was one of my all time favorite things to do. Oh my God, dude, I'm telling you, I grew up in small town, Texas. I had never seen a mountain, much less snow on a mountain. And, uh, this still today, uh, the first time I ever popped on one of these was probably 13 years ago. And I loved it. In my very early twenties, I also discovered rock climbing. Um, I couldn't get enough of it. It wasn't about trying to be skinny or this or that. It was about wanting to do something really fun and challenging. And, um, you know, full disclosure, this picture is uh, my very first lead ever. And um, it's actually pretty low to the ground. You can't tell, but it's pretty low to the ground because I had like a really good place to hold on to and place to put my foot so I could get one good picture of my first lead. And, uh, and then no more cameras, like let's pay attention and <laughs> make sure I don't fall. But um, another great thing is just to show the evolution of things that I love. Um, the day I've actually have not rock climbed one single time since the day I discovered mountain biking. This was about 10 years ago and I fell in love with it. Um, this picture cracks me up. I'm wearing what I used to call my Ninja Turtle outfit because I'm hanging out in one of my favorite places called Downeyville and uh, it's some gnarly rocks and stuff like that. So I always felt really protected if I had all my you know, gear on so that I would, you know, cause I'm still, I'm still a girl. Like I don't like to fall and it, you know, if I get a scratch, I'll cry a little bit. It's not cool. I don't want to see blood or anything. So um, but I love the adventure. And, you know, I haven't rock climbed a day in my life since I picked up a mountain bike. And that's okay, too. Like, this is this is my thing. I love doing it, you know. And that's the point I'm trying to make with this video. Can you find things in your life that you love to do? You know, and it doesn't have to be this heroic, you know, snowboarding and rock climbing and rah, or all these crazy things that, that I've enjoyed over the course of, you know, my adult life. You know, but... From somebody who was never athletic, who, I, I mean, my God, I played the clarinet for seven years in band. That was who I am, you know? And, uh, you know, for me to take on these athletic endeavors, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Anybody can do it. And it doesn't mean you have to. It doesn't mean that it's got to be full-blown, crazy, you know, California mountain biking sports stuff. But there is something that you must love to do. You know, this is my other passion, one of many. This is a picture of me salsa dancing. Now, again, full disclosure here, um, I could not find any pictures of me salsa dancing. So this picture was l literally taken, I think, about 10 years ago. This was, let me think, a little less than 10 years ago. But what I'll tell you, which cracks me up, I, it's a little embarrassing that this was the only picture I could find, but you will never see me dancing salsa today wearing a skirt that short and a shirt like that. Some chicks still do it, but it's not my thing. And I think it's hilarious what we do when we're in our 20s. But... Uh, <laughs> You know, I think the testament of this picture of showing, you know, a decade later, I just went out dancing last weekend. You know, it's something that a decade later, I still absolutely love to do. You know, it's, it's something that I wanted so badly and I enjoy it so much. And my question to you is what can you find that you enjoy so much that doesn't have anything to do with, I'm going to lose all this weight or... I've got to not eat this or I can't eat that or I'm going to eat out of house and home. So now I have to exercise like crazy. It's like, you know, forget that mentality. Okay. So the action that I want you to take with this video, with this training is to stop connecting weight loss and exercise. Stop connecting food and exercise. Those are toxic nutritional beliefs that are holding you back and keeping you in a body that you do not love. That is the wrong answer. The answer is to start moving your body in a way that feels honest and playful and fun. And you want to do this as much as possible. So like for me, it's salsa dancing or mountain biking, or lately it's surfing. I don't have any good surfing pictures or, or anything that just moves your soul and moves your body. It might be hiking. You know, lately I have a puppy. My favorite thing to do is just to go out and go for like an hour long walk places, you know? So that's what you're doing in, and then in the world of exercise, 
to exercise your body. I want you to choose a fitness regime that is fun, that is playful, it's intense, like the Tabatas that we talked about, but it is brief. And you do it maybe one or two times a week, maybe three tops, okay? This is the key to moving your beautiful body. And when you can get into your body, you can become embodied through doing these, you get out of your head. Weight loss does not happen when you get stuck in your head. When you get stuck in your head, you get stuck on a number. You get stuck on a calorie. You get stuck on a scale, you know, a number on the scale. That is what we don't want. We want to get you in your body. Okay, so what I want you to do is your action is I want you to put your Move Your Beautiful Body plan together based on these two criteria up here. Um, moving your body in a way you love and a fitness regime that is fun, playful, intense, yet also brief. I want you to put the plan together and I want you to share it with me here on my blog. You can see it right here. This is where you're going to find this video. If you are um, already watching this video on my blog, just go down below. And if you are not, get over there right now, audreybaker.com. You can see where to post it and share it with us, guys. We're trying to build some community here. And uh, this is a great way to start to feel inspired and also inspire other people who are there as well. Okay? Now, I know this is a long one. Sorry about that. Sometimes they're short and sweet. But, man, I have a lot to say about the world of exercise. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you in our last training video. See you next time. Bye.